congregation, we welcome you all in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. I want the parents to, to call the children, remind them uh, the service, although we, we started a little late due to technical difficulties, we sincerely apologize um, about that. But parents, call your children. Children, call your parents. Wives, call your husbands. Husbands, call your wife. The wives. Uh, it is time for us to magnify, to glorify, to exalt uh, the name of the living God. Uh, and as we do so, the hand of God, the power of God, it will come upon your lives in the name of Jesus. Uh, and I declare, I declare, no one that came here will go back the same in the name of Jesus. Uh, everyone will receive a miracle from the Lord. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. Amen. Are we ready to praise his name this morning? Has God been good to you? I need you to put on your dancing shoes and give God your best. Amen. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to my God, hallelujah. Glory be to my God, hallelujah. Glory, glory be to my God, hallelujah. Glory be to my God. I'm 
shall cry at you this morning. Come on and bless his name. Come on and bless his name. Come on and lift him up.
Anywhere Jesus Christ went, what was he always doing? He was always doing good. And that is the life of our Father in the Lord. He was always doing good. He was always touching mankind. If he sees you in your low estate, he always makes sure he draws you out. Is somebody feeling me this morning? He draws you out. If he sees at home, you need to go to school more. He draws you out to become a student. If you feel that you need some healing in your body, he draws you out so that the power of God can touch you. That's the person that we have come to celebrate this morning. Uh, people are not talking the way I am. People are not feeling the way I am. That's the person that we are going to celebrate this morning. So I don't want you to put on a movie face. I want you to put on the face of celebration. Because he came, he saw, and he conquered. Oh my God. Oh my God. He came, he saw, and he conquered. Hallelujah. All through the streets, he was always touching men, always healing men. Always bringing men to Christ. Pass them for God's word. Pass them for God's word. Pass them to do the will of God. And I believe that at the end of this meeting, the power of God will rest upon us so much to continue with the work on the legacy that He has left behind. So I welcome you. I welcome our Zoom listeners. I welcome our brethren who are here. I welcome those who are on YouTube, watching on YouTube. The Lord will bless you as you stay focused. The Lord will bless you. And he will walk over. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Yeah, the call that they were, it's not allowing me to mute. Okay, hello. Can you hear me now? Hello. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. It's a wonderful privilege to be with you on this occasion. This is a worthy cause to be part of. And it's a privilege to be part of this cause. My name is Andrew Omatosho. And I hope you are all hearing me. Some people live when they, when they die, they leave effigies, images for themselves. President Hussein of Iraq did that. And there are so many effigies erected in America to celebrate people who conquered the, uh, in the war, who destroyed their enemies, and, you know, and who even wickedly abuse people as, uh, as, as slave owners. They erect effigies for them, for themselves. But those don't last. In the end, they are pulled down. So it's a beautiful thing to be part of this event today because we are celebrating the life of a, of a pastor, of a man of God, who built men, not citadels. He built men. Hallelujah. Because he built men, not citadels. That's why we are here. And he continues to build men. The endowment today is about building man. And I'm going to tell you a few of the things that this uh, mission has done, this uh, foundation has done. It's a mission to award scholarships to university students. 
who demonstrate superlative intellect and or financial need, not just those who are very brilliant, but those also who just don't have the need to pursue education. It is to provide students with the tools necessary to pursue higher education, tools necessary to pursue higher education. Since this started, over 20 scholarships have been awarded. Even this year, scholarships were given to a medical student in India. You know, this is an international ministry. And the way the Lord expanded this ministry has been wonderful. And the fruit is showing and abiding. So this year, scholarships were awarded to one medical student in India, to Sasika, and also two undergraduate students in America here, in Nigeria, annual scholarship awards are given to learners. And the study scholarship fund was set up by the Foundation for University of Lagos students through the Lagos Varsity Christian Union. As you know, our brother, our father, our father in the Lord, you know, uh, was part of the Varsity Christian Union in its young age. He's been with the Lord all that time. And he, you know, and he has been sowing into lives by preaching the gospel, you know, by encouraging the youth, by challenging them, by helping them. And he continued to do that, even as he founded this church here. Um, I continue to build men in the church. This is why the church is enduring, because he didn't sell himself to them. He showed them Christ. That's why it's enduring. So it's a continuation of this that, you know, you should be part of this movement. That's what he stood, he lived for. And that's what, you know, when his, his, his job was done, the Lord called him home. But that means what he has stood for will continue. Just as Jesus left, Jesus left. He said he had to leave. We all at some point of time, we have to leave. But what legacy are you leaving behind? Are you following Christ? Because you are following Christ, then your fruit will abide. And we thank God today that because our brother, our father, our father in the Lord, followed Christ, was a disciple of Jesus Christ, then his fruit endures. And I want you to be part of that. Let it be a movement. Contribute in one way or the other to this foundation and the Lord will bless you abundantly. Congratulations. Let's, let's thank the Lord. Let's thank the Lord. Let's thank the Lord. Father, we thank you. Lord, we bless your holy name, O oh Lord. For those who have assembled here, as these proceed, proceedings go on, be manifest in our midst. Speak to every heart. Meet every need. Let this day be memorable. And let it be imprinted in the hearts of everyone that, that to support this movement forever and ever. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
I do know that uh, Pastor Yoli will be very happy right now. You know why? Because those are the songs that he loves and epitomize who he was and who he is to us. As they were singing, I just wrote that down, leave Jesus higher. They sing that song like no other person here in the church. And when they were singing, Search on the Blood of Jesus, I was literally saying, Pastor Yomi, please let's put our hands together. Satan, the blood of Jesus, is against you. So we give God all of the praise because we stand in the realm and in the place of victory. That's why we come as you are seated, you are seated in heavenly places. God has conquered for us. Amen. Minister, anybody? Hallelujah! It's a privilege to be here. We want to thank God for what God is doing in our midst. Uh, we thank God because the legacy of our father lives on. Um, how much can we say? <laughs> how much can we say? I think uh, PA said a lot of things about going to school. I remember I will share this. Um, I remember vividly when I went back to school and um, they posted me my um, what did they post you after you graduate? <laughs> My certificate. <laughs> I I was so excited. I told my husband I was going to take it to church and show it to pastor. 
I know a lot of people would think he's so childlike, but uh, the encouragement, the um, like he'll come in every Sunday and he tells you you can do it. And it's like, it's not just words, those words keep ringing and keep pushing you ahead. And so when I got that certificate, it was a struggle because in my hands, I had three young kids at that time. And uh, my husband was also in school and it was a challenge. But then when I found out that I went through it and uh, I had my certificate, I brought it to his office, I was so happy. And he prayed for me that day. And praying for me, I was thinking, oh, say, you did it. <laughs> so he actually encouraged me and he said, so let's go to the next step. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so I was thinking, he was like, you did a good job so he can rest. No, but he told me, okay, what next? Let's go. <laughs> Hallelujah. What I'm bringing this is that our father is a pusher. He pushes you higher. What a man of God. What a man of God. We thank God for him. I know some people came to this church. We had some of our members. They are not here. I think they are not until they get here. We didn't know that we never met him here. We didn't meet him uh, being in the church. So when he came, he said, I didn't know him, but from all, all that I hear from all of you, he was a great man. <laughs> he, he was. And uh, we thank God for the legacy. So the only of the foundation lives on like our daddy in the Lord, uh, Reverend Omoto has spoken. It's been a blessing to many people, uh, people in Nigeria, people in this uh, country, America, and I believe it's going all over the world. It's not even just here, sorry. India also. <laughs> I know it's going all over the world. I don't think we have touched Germany, but I know we are going to touch all these places. And we want to celebrate what God is doing in our midst. So, uh, this year, we were debating about nature and nurture. How does it affect the educational uh, state of a person? And uh, we had a lot of people recorded videos who are uh, sent in uh, their materials. And out of it all, we have two winners. And uh, I just want to tell you that the, this foundation is, is actually based on need basis. We, it's a lot of uh, things. Uh, going out there, going on out there in the lives of people. So we, we believe God to touch people who actually need it. And I want to employ you, anytime you get anything from this foundation, please use it towards your educational um, groups. Not, not to go to Macy's or business, business stores. Please use it. That is what it is for. I don't know why my story just went that way, but uh, Please use it so that you can grow uh, in whatever you put your hands into when it comes to education. That is what it is made for. And the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. So our winner, our first winner today is Sister Elizabeth Okiji. Hallelujah! 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 And we have our second winner, Rebecca Suri. The Lord bless you. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. Like I said, it's to touch people's life, and the Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. So, nature is who you have, where you're coming from. But this is part of nurturing the church, the people of God, being one thing or the other, and this foundation supporting you. The Lord will bless you. Thank you, everyone. We have a winner. Oh, the next session we are going into now is to have a CD in my hand. Today I don't have it, I'll just say as much as I can say. <laughs> because the CV is so thick. <laughs> Let's put our hands together before I talk to you. We are very privileged to have in our midst Dr. Adewumi, who will be anchoring this session of the Nation for the Foundation. God bless you, sir. Hallelujah. Well, I'm very glad that you're here. And for those joining us online, I'm very glad you're here. 
Today we are worshiping the Lord and we are celebrating the legacy of Pastor Lugiomi Agawale. We're also celebrating the vision of the, of the uh, Pastor Lugiomi Agawale. And I don't want that vision to grow deep. You following me? In our spiritual lives, when the vision begins to grow, grow deep, we need to call on the Lord. When the word of God begins to grow cold, we need to call on the Lord. When you're going to enjoy worshiping the Lord as you used to, you need to call on the Lord. Yeah. Okay? So this vision and this legacy, we don't want it to grow cold. We don't want, to, we don't want the vision to grow deep. Now, there are many foundations in the United States where we live. You know, you've heard of uh, the Ford Foundation. There are many Mellon Foundation. Uh, there are many others. If you happen to watch PBX, at the end of all those educational shows, you see a list of foundations. My friends, they started somewhere. Okay? They don't need a million dollars to start. They started somewhere. So we are very fortunate that we started somewhere and the Lord will bless this ministry and bless this foundation. Now, in as much as I'm talking to believers, I want to bring you encouragement from the Word of God. If you have your Bible, come with me to, uh, to Exodus 25. Now, let's read just a couple of verses. Exodus 25. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the people of Israel that they, they take offering. I lost my way. That they take for me an offering from every man whose heart makes him willing, you shall receive an offering for me. And this is the offering you shall receive from them gold, silver, bronze, blue and purple scarlet stuff. And, and the list goes on. That is what the Lord told Moses with a specific instruction. Speak to the people of Israel. Well, let's bring that to today. Speak to the people of God. Take an offering for me. Okay? Now, I want you to flip your, you know, a couple of pages to chapter 35. Verse 1, chapter 35, Exodus. So Moses obeyed God. Moses assembled all the congregation of the people of Israel and said to them, These are the things which the Lord has commanded you to do. Now let's skip to verse 4. Moses said to all the congregation of the people of Israel, This is the thing which the Lord has commanded. Take from among you an offering to the Lord, whoever is of a generous heart. Let him bring forth an offering of gold, silver, bronze, blue and purple, scarlet stuff, and so forth. I'll read, I'll read that to you in, uh, in James. It's just a different uh, rendition. Verse 4. And Moses spake unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, This is the thing which the Lord commanded you. Take from among you an offering unto the Lord, whosoever is of a willing heart. Now, we don't live under the old covenant anymore. We live in the new covenant. But in these few verses, we see the heart of God. Amen. Because God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Amen. So we don't live under the old covenant, but God is the same. And God says, take an offering from everyone whose heart is willing, whose heart is stirred up. So my brothers, my sisters, and those of you online, I want you to give as generously as you can. Let your heart be stirred up. Let, your, let, let there be willingness. Let there be generosity. You know, Olu Yomi Adewale Foundation, 
needs our moral support, also needs material support. He needs prayer, but also needs material support. So I'm encouraging you to dig deep and support the New York Valley Foundation. We heard of two winners this morning. That is because of your generosity in the past. And list of those winners will increase as we have more, uh, uh, as we you know, as you stretch forth to support this ministry. So let me, uh, for the sake of those who are online, if you want to give today by check, make your checks uh, actually for people who are here. If you want to give by check, write your checks to Oluyomi Adewale Foundation. But if you are more trendy than people like me, we can sell the money. Okay, so an account number 836-105-0590. If you want to write that down, oh, the number is on, number is on the screen. That makes it easy. And the routing number, is two three one three. You know what? To sell, you only need the account number, right? Okay. All right. So, if you want, if you are, uh, if you use Cash App, the number is two three. Okay, no Cash App. All right. So. Checks. All right. So if you want to know, if you want to you know, pay into the account number, you see that on the screen and the routing number. So, all right. Um, are we going to have uh, some music? All right. So because we're going to uh, pass the basket around. And uh, everyone, put your hands in your pockets. Put your hands in your pockets. Put that in the book. And let's. I'm 
also the moment of the grace of God. I remember one of our meetings like this when we were having the lecture and God took over so much. It wasn't uh, so much like the lecture. I don't know if we just get something. It's not a read paper to us. It's different. Though. Let's have kill it. But the Spirit of God that give it life. Amen. So this morning is a different morning. We are privileged to have in our midst someone who is not just a preacher, but is someone who is a voice to generation. Someone who is a voice to nation. You know, when God raised men of God, there are some who are raised to be a voice to the nation. President listening to them. The low listen to them. The high, those who are in the middle, they listen to them. And we are privileged to have Dr. Tunde Bakar. He's a former pastor of Sitanga Global Community Church. Formerly known as Lattery. If you are here, you don't know Lattery. You are just in the new generation. I'm just privileged to be among those who know Lattery. It's a church that is already located in Lagos, reaching out to all parts of the world. He's a preacher, he's a husband, he's a doctor, and is here by the grace of God to bless us. His CV is so long that I will have to be reading it because I need another, I need interpretation. I was looking at it, I need interpretation to interpret what has been written. We salute you, sir. It's a privilege to even, uh, you know, to be the one to, to talk about you. We thank God for your life and what you represent in our political system. We thank God for your life, for how you are bridging the gap between those who have not and those who have. We thank God for your life of how you have been trying to tell the church that we have to take our place in politics, in governance. And I believe that as the letter comes forth, our lives will not remain the same. Amen. You are concerned. Thank you so very much. Uh, good morning, people of God. I say peace to you, to your household, peace to all that you have, peace to America, the country you sojourn, and peace to our beloved nation, Nigeria. I consider it a very great privilege to join you on this occasion of the sixth annual Oluyomi Adewale Foundation Lecture in honor of my friend and brother, architect Uluyomi Adewale of blessed memory. In accepting the invitation, I was reminded of the words of British American author, Christopher Hitchens. He was asked, what do you most value in your friends? And Hitchens asked in his memoir, H22, their continued existence, the author concluded. 
And much as we would have desired the continued presence of architect at Dewali on this side of eternity, it is gratifying that his heartbeat still resounds through the Oluyomiya Dewali Foundation years after he returned to his eternal home. I heard earlier on that he was a man who built men and therefore his legacy continues. His continued impact lends credence to the words of Frank Rooney, who said, immortality is a genius to move others long after you yourself have stopped moving. I'd like to commend the efforts of his wife, Pastor Mrs. Bola Adewale, and children, as well as the board members of the foundation and the leadership team of Cornerstone Christian Ministries New York, who have preserved the legacy of this righteous man. I consider the prayer of Naomi appropriate at this juncture. Naomi said in Ruth chapter 2, verse 20, blessed is he of the Lord, who has not forsaken his kindness to the living and the dead. May God bless you all richly as we keep this legacy alive by your generous gift in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I would like to say that I was a direct beneficiary of the gracious genius of Oluyomi Adewale at the University of Lagos in 1978, when as a student of architecture, he took up the challenge to be my campaign manager when I became the first Christian to run for the office of the president of the University of Lagos Student Union Government. At a time when the prevailing posture was the seclusion of believers from terrains such as politics due to a fear of mixture and contamination, my friend Oluyomi Adewale designed and organized a creative campaign in support of a politician from the pulpit, as I was called at the time. His voluntary management of my campaign was not only an act of courage, it was also one of faith and friendship. Upon graduating as an architect and driven by his persuasion that the call to serve God must pervade every domain of influence, Oluyomi Adewale will go on as a professor of architecture and mathematics to impact the next generation as he taught at King University and Essex County College in New Jersey, while at the same time imparting lives as a pastor and servant of God, the master architect. This brings me today to the theme of this lecture. Let me begin with master architects in history. Throughout history, we have seen phenomenal edifices emerge from the arts landscapes from living spaces to workspaces, from places of worship to palaces and government buildings, from games and sports, arenas, to event centers and amusement parks, the buildings and structures that dot the landscapes affirm that humanity has carried on the work of creation. However, these magnificent structures were preceded by the conceptual work of a unique class of professionals called the architects. It is why we refer to these magnificent structures as architectural masterpieces. The individuals behind these masterpieces are described as master architects. These master architects include the likes of Michelangelo, who designed the dome of St. Basil Peter's Basilica in Vatican City, Augustus Pugin, who designed the interior of the Houses of Parliament and the Big Ben in London. Louis Henry Sullivan, who modernized American architecture and is known as the father of the skyscraper. I am Pei, who designed the glass Louvre pyramid at the Louvre Museum in Paris. Norman Forster, who designed the Millennium Bridge in London and the London City Hall. Dame Saha Hadid, one of the world's few celebrated female architects who designed the Guangzhou Opera House in China. Frank Gehry, the non-Nigerian architect who designed the Walt Disney Concert Hall in Los Angeles. 
and has become the model of many young architects. And Frank Lloyd Wright, regarded as a foremost African American, I beg you, architect who designed Falling Water, a home that sits on a waterfall in Pennsylvania. In Africa, famous architects and their works include Lanre Tori Koka was one of the original planners of Nigeria's federal capital territory, Abuja. Olajumoke Adenowo, who was designed for global brands, including Coca-Cola, L'Oreal, and Guarantee Trust Bank. And Sir David Ajayi, the Ghanaian British architect, who designed the Smithsonian National Museum of African American History and Culture, and was awarded the gold medal of the Royal Institute of British Architecture. Permit me to add to this category, Professor Michael Adeloya Debamowo of the University of Lagos, who designed the architectural blueprint of the Citadel, a new phenomenon in church architecture. They and others in their class attained stardom as a result of the star buildings that emerged from their designs. As such, in addition to the phrase master architects, they are referred to as star architects, a portmanteau word for star and architect. Attributes of master architects. Please bear with me as I lay foundation before I introduce God Almighty Himself. There are certain core attributes possessed by every master architect, and these include the following. Number one, vision. The ability to first crystallize the essence of a structure before its creation. Number two, immersion. The ability to gain a full grasp of the spirit of the prevailing civilization or age and to interpret it in their work. Number three, discernment, the ability to decode the needs and aspirations of the client. Number four, disruption, the ability to transcend the prevailing spirit of the prevailing civilization or age, challenge the status quo and chart a new course in culture and civilization. Number five, communication, the ability to explain the essence and features of their work in a clear enough manner to facilitate execution and command appreciation of its value. And number six, collaboration, the ability to work with clients, fellow architects, builders, artisans, and a wide array of stakeholders to ensure the realization of the vision. The relationship between the architect and the builder is worth emphasizing because for every architectural blueprint to be translated to reality, the master architect as a draftsman must work collaboratively with the craftsman, the builder. And then number seven, design. The ability to combine art and science to produce executable blueprints to the appropriate scale. To buttress these attributes, Consider the submission of architect Jumoke Adenowo in describing the essence of architecture beyond buildings. During a BBC Business Africa special, she said, architecture is deep. It is about life. Architecture is about national identity. Architecture is about legacy. It's about immortality. It's about man's quest to live forever. Architecture is not just about function, it's about the same gaze, the spirit of the age. So there is a lot more to architecture than housing or buildings. It's about who we are as a people and how we define ourselves at this time. In this statement, Africa star architect, as CNN described her, echoed the philosophy of Augustus Weldy Puji, who believed that good architecture is a result of good society. And driven by this philosophy, Begin had a vision of architecture as a moral force, a force for good, to transform the prevailing decadent society that was reflective of the government of King George. This brings us to the call to build again. I am reminded of the symbolism of the citadel, the complex that houses the church where I serve as overseer. Beyond being a new phenomenon in church architecture is a forerunner model of the new Nigeria. And I would like to quote a portion of the address I presented on the occasion of the fundraiser for the Citadel on September 3, 2016. 
in many ways, if not in all the story, in many ways, if not in all, the story of the citadel is Nigeria's story. It is not the story of a lone individual, lone building, or a lone congregation. It's a symbol of a new way, a new people, and a foretaste of the new Nigeria. The citadel will point to what is possible on the African continent, what can happen when we remember that our humanity comes in different colors and creeds, but is fundamentally the same, and what we can make of the raw material of setbacks to begin to build again. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, to build again is a call to every nation builder whose nation lies in rubbles, as did Jerusalem when Nehemiah heeded the call of destiny. To build again is a call to every Nigerian who is grieved by the state of our nation and longs for the emergence of the new Nigeria. To build again is a call to every reformer who is challenged by the decay across institutions from the family to the nation, be it in the Western world or in the third world. To build again is a challenge to every individual who is confronted with the tragedy of failed dreams. To build again was what the master architect did at creation when he achieved the greatest architectural feat in the history of this side of eternity as he rebuilt a breathtaking edifice, planet Earth. To understand our mandate to build again, let us at this juncture visit the design studio of God the master architect himself. A partial tour of the design studio of the master architect. In the first verse of the first chapter of the first book of the Bible, Genesis, we are introduced to God as a creator of the heavens and the earth. However, by the second verse, we read of a chaotic earth that had become formless, empty, and covered by darkness. This was not originally so. Isaiah 45, verse number 18, reveals that God did not create the earth to be an empty wasteland. In the New Living Translation, it reads, and I quote, For the Lord is God, and he created the heavens and the earth, and put everything in place. He made the world to be lived in, not to be a place of empty cares. I am the Lord, he says and there is no order. Dear friends, the chaos in Genesis chapter one, verse two, was evidently not by design, but the result of the fall of Satan, following his rebellion against God in Revelation chapter 12, from verse seven to nine. To nine we learn that war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought, but they did not prevail. There was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. We then see the Spirit of God in Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, brooding over this chaotic mass. And to translate this phenomenal error, in architectural design for a contemporary understanding, I want you to picture in your mind Daniel Leibskind or David Chills, the architects, architects commissioned to design the buildings that will replace the World Trade Center after the Twin Towers were destroyed in the September 11 attacks. Picture them brooding over ground zero, the site of the falling buildings, and conceiving the designs of the new buildings that will replace the Twin Towers. As God brooded over the chaotic earth, the Holy Spirit incubated the architectural blueprint of the earth and set the stage for the rebuilding process. As we produce through this Genesis creation account, as well as several supporting texts across scripture, we see God Almighty, the master architect, demonstrating all the attributes of great architects that I listed earlier, and much more beyond what any man can conceptualize or can bring to birth. Let's consider the seven things I mentioned earlier. Number one is vision. As the Holy Spirit was brooding over the earth, we see in action 
the God who not only knows the future, the God who caused those things would be not as though they were because it has a clear picture of the preferred future. Number two, immersion. God in designing the earth did not do so far removed from the prevailing situation of the earth at the time. Instead, the Holy Spirit interfaced with the chaotic earth by brooding or overing over the waters. Number three, discernment. In the creation process, God himself was a client and the service provider because not only was the earth created by him, it was created for him. You find that in Revelation 4, 11, created everything for his own pleasure. Nevertheless, although he created the earth for himself, his intention was to have living creatures inhabiting the earth with man having full custody over the earth as his region. Hence, God, in his architectural blueprint, made provision for the needs of all living creatures and for the needs and aspiration of man, including those needs and aspirations that man had not even realized he heard. Let's come to number four, disruption. Although God interfaced with the chaotic earth that had lost sync with his purpose, the master architect did not settle for the chaos. Instead, out of the chaos, he caused to emerge a culture of order, thus charting a new curse in civilization. As you hear me today, I don't care what this order is going in your life. I don't care how the winds are blowing against you. And I don't care what fierce storms are raging against your house. In the name of Jesus Christ, the God who commanded the light to shine out from darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God on the face of Jesus Christ, we move into your situation and bring order into any chaotic disorder you may be facing in the name of Jesus. Number five, communication. Throughout the creation process, we witness the art of communication between the architect and builder, as well as from the architect, architect and builder to the, to the end user man. Hence, we hear conversations among the end and instructions from the end, end to man, such quality communication that will facilitate collaborative execution as well as an understanding of the value of the output. I will explain that in the course of the lecture, that when it was time to make man, it wasn't just God said and God did, God said and God did. A council was called in heaven, the God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They held a meeting in that council and they let us, for the first time you find that us in the Bible, the word U.S., let us make man in our own image and after our own likeness. And because God has made you in the name of Jesus, as you listen to this lecture, any other thing that tries to make you, that tries to disfigure you, we not take place in your life in the name of Jesus because of the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross of Calvary. He died so that we may live. He became poor so that we become rich. You know the righteousness that Jesus had imparted unto us. The Bible says, even you know sin became sin for us, that we may be made the righteousness of God in him. We clearly say every time in the church I pastor, you can win by righteousness. In, in the book of Proverbs, chapter number 12, verse 26, he said, in the, part, in the way of righteousness, there's life. And in his part, there is no death. In the name of Jesus, your hopes and your aspirations will not die. As the legacy of my friend is still living on after he's gone to join the saints triumphant in Jesus' mighty name, God will ensure that you too contributing to his own legacy will have an enduring legacy in Jesus' mighty name. In number six, collaboration. The collaborative dynamic of the Godhead is captured in the phrase, as I said, let us make, let us make man in our own image in Genesis 1.26. Even though human architects may agree to disagree or even descend into a healthy competition, I'm talking of natural architects who are competing or bidding for a job, they may fight, they may do everything. But the creation process exemplifies perfect harmony and collaboration between the architect and the builder, because unlike human architects, 
The master architect is a master builder. The draftsman is a craftsman. The father, the son, and the Holy Spirit are one. Beyond this divine collaboration, in God's design studio, we also see the master architect decide to collaborate with his creation by making man in the image and the likeness of the Godhead, giving him dominion and delegating aspects of the word of creation to man. That's why people have what you call geniuses today, and they can do uh, 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 what you call masterpieces. They can create by the grace of God, especially those who are believers, because witty inventions is part of what God has promised to give to us. Now, design number seven, the must design expertise of God, the master architect, is seen in the logical and precise order of creation. From the wonders of Eden and its ecosystems to the fearfully and wonderfully fashioned intricacies of the human body. My God, I'm sure your grace on 139, he has fearfully and wonderfully made you and every day of your life is set in, in, in motion by him, even before they occur. He knows everything about you. He is a master architect. He is a grand organized designer. This is God. And his divine imprint of perfection is everywhere evident in the word of God. Let me go to the integrated design, integrated design tool of the master architect. This is where I want you to please pray for yourself, pray for the church, pray for the legacy of my friend, that he will continue as God will raise men and women to further the cause for which he lived for. To further appreciate the master architect in his design studio, we need to refer to Proverbs chapter number eight. Here we will observe that unlike the human architect who deploys a variety of sketching tools, whether traditional or digital, the master architect has all his tools in a single integrated platform. It's called wisdom. Wisdom. Through wisdom, the art is created. In Proverbs 8, 22 to 31, the Bible says, and I quote, the law possessed me at the beginning of his way before his works of old. I've been established from everlasting from the beginning before there was ever an earth. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no fountains abounding with water, before the mountains were settled, before the hills, I was brought forth. While as yet he had not made the earth or the fields, or the primal doors of the world. When he prepared the heavens, I was there. That's wisdom talking to you. When he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he drew a circle on the face of the deep. When he established the clouds above, when he strengthened the fountains of the deep, when he assigned to the sea its limit so that the waters will not transgress his command. When he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was beside him as a master craftsman and I was daily easy light Rejoicing always before him, rejoicing in his habitat, his inhabited word, and my delight was with the sons of men. As you study the full text of Proverbs chapter 8, you will observe that God's design tool is useful no matter the object of his design. From the individual to the family, from the nation to the earth, and from the known to the unknown universe, this same tool is available to us today as God's collaborators in the mandate to restore and rebuild institutions. I want to remind everyone listening to me that when Jesus commissioned his disciples to go into the world to preach the gospel to every nation, he said, make disciples of nations, not just make disciples in a nation, make disciples of nation. And as I'm speaking, I trust God that it will, you will be awake to righteousness and know that every mountain of influence, mountain of culture must be taken over by Christians in the name of Jesus as we begin to strategically position and plant us here. I know that we are told that this world is not his own, but he wants all the kingdoms of this world. According to Revelation, they must become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ. Jomia Dewale lived for this. He went to the nations of the earth. He trained people. He wanted good for everyone. 
and his legacy must also reflect his aspirations while he was still here. Listen to me attentively. I was in South Africa ministering, and a young lady approached me, a Nigerian. He said, sir, I've been struggling for five, six, eight years now. I want to build a school. I don't have money to build a school. I said, okay, what does it take to build? He said, I need money. I need cement. I need this. He counted it. I said, that's the problem you have. The Bible says it is through wisdom that a house is built. Through understanding, it's established. And through knowledge, all the places in it are fully furnished. When God gives you wisdom, you become creative. And I want to remind everyone listening to me that Jesus had become wisdom for us and sanctification and justification and redemption. That's what he has become for us. And we must excel in every field of endeavor because we have the wisdom of Christ. I pray that you will have the mind of Christ today. Let the mind of Christ be in you. And if you have the mind of Christ, no flies can play on a hot stove. If you have a kitchen, you see flies sometimes play on cold stove. But put fire there. Let wisdom of God, let knowledge and the riches of understanding of God begin to burn like a, a fiery flame. No demon can operate because you have the mind of Christ. This is my challenge to nation builders who are in the image of God, the master architect himself. Let me now zero in on the call to rebuild nations and show how we can deploy the attributes of the master architect to rebuild a nation that currently lies in ruins. I'll take those seven things again. Number one, vision. Our vision for our nation must be propelled by an understanding of God's plan for the nations. In Genesis 12, 2, God lays out his vision for the nation when he calls Abram and said to him, I will make you a great nation. Christians must not fold their hands or else will become a big shame because we are put here to extend the frontiers of God's kingdom in every facet of human society. God will let us say to Abraham, in your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. In Galatians 3, chapter 7, the Bible says, know that those who are faith are the seed of Abraham. For the scripture foreseen that God will justify the nations, preach the gospel to Abraham, saying, in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. That is the authentic gospel. It was preached by God himself to Abraham in Genesis 3, 7 to 9. In you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Are we living up to that? Or we are living as packing a suitcase that we are waiting for Jesus to come and then we can escape. If God wants us to escape, the day you are saved, he would have taken you home. He left you here because he wants you to do your bit. My friend Yomi Adewale did his bit. He left his legacy and is continuing now. And I'm challenging you that you must embrace what vision God gave to Abraham. In Acts 17, 26, the NIV version, it is written, from one man, he made all the nations, that they should inhabit the whole earth, and he marked out the appointed times in history and the boundaries of their lands. Therefore, in the midst of our national cares, we must be propelled by God's picture of a preferred future for our beloved nation, Nigeria. And for the nation where you live, America, there's a lot of cares in your own nation too, but Christians as the salt of the earth, and as the light of the world must rise to the occasion by saving one here, by saving an institution there, by reaching out and by declaring the authentic gospel without religion. Religion smells. I can't stand it. I can't stand religion. The word religio means return to bondage. That's what it means. Relationship with God is what Christ brought, not religion. Number two, immersion. It says we as nation builders must interface with our nation in its current state, no matter how despicable it is. We must be ready to make contact with our contamination. Daniel did that in Babylon. He purposed in his heart that he will not defile himself with the king's portion of meat or drink and see how God exalted him in a foreign nation. See what Joseph did in Egypt. See what the likes of 
Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach did in their day to let people know that God is alive and he speaks. This is why I continue to urge the Nigerian diaspora to fully identify with Nigeria and actively work towards its transformation. Like Nehemiah, the Nigerian diaspora must embrace brain gain instead of brain drain. We must embrace brain gain strategies as propagated by movements such as Nigerians for Nigeria so that they can be positioned to deploy their resources, talents, and skills to build a new Nigeria. Number three, discernment. As nation builders, we must become like Ezekiel, who sat where the people sat. For this foundation to be thinking of giving scholarship to someone in India is identifying with humanity, no matter where they are, because you never can tell what that doctor will become when he finishes. Ezekiel sat where people sat, which means we must be able to design the needs of the people that we are called to serve and understand the issues that affect them so that we can administer empathic solutions to problems. Here comes number four, disruption. Even as we interface with the present state of our nation across the landscapes, including the social, economic, and political spheres, we must be ready to disrupt the status quo. There's no status in status quo. We must be ready to disrupt the status quo and become instrumental in the emergence of the nation of our dreams. Communication. This call to nation building is a call to communicate. As custodians of the vision of a new nation, as the seed of Abraham, blessed along with believing Abraham, while the majority of our citizens are overwhelmed by the chaos in the nation, it is our responsibility to communicate the picture of the preferred future in a manner clear enough for it to be embraced by the generality of our people so that hope will be restored to our nation and the majority that is wrong today will become the minority while the minority that is right today will become the majority. I know it's a question of time. The majority that is wrong will become the minority. The minority that is right will become the majority is only a question of time. Collaboration. As we embrace the call to rebuild our nation, we must understand our respective roles in this mandate and be ready to collaborate with fellow nation builders so that every joint we supply in building the culture, the structure and infrastructure dimensions of our nation, we must also deal with intrastructural booby traps that fuel conflicts so that we can unite to build a truly great nation. I believe in my lifetime, there'll be a new Nigeria for every Nigeria. And you can do the same in your city of Sojourn, in New York, wherever you are. You can make a difference. You can become what is called an oasis of love, of joy, of gladness, of raising children that will be sent into the world to make a difference. Let me round off with design. Number seven, as nation builders, our strategy must be to receive the blueprint from God Almighty, the grand organized designer, and to execute the divine blueprint in our spheres of influence until every facet of our nation and the nations of the earth aligns with the agenda of God. Brothers and sisters, as Abraham's spiritual eyes were elevated to look forward to the city whose architect and builder is God, so were men of all supernaturally endowed and commissioned to execute design briefs to God's specifications. Noah received the architectural blueprint of the earth. He was able to save his own household and the rest of creation. Moses received the architectural blueprint of the tabernacle. God filled it with his presence. David received the architectural bl blueprint of the temple. And when it was completed, almighty God's presence was felt there that even trumpeters could not dare to stand in his presence. Likewise, we have also received the architectural blueprint of the new Nigeria from God, the master architect. The new Nigeria is a nation that is equitably structured and productively governed, a nation where no one goes to bed hungry and no child is left out of school without access to quality education. Where our homes, schools, streets, villages, highways, and cities are safe and secure, and Nigerians can walk play or travel with their minds at rest and go to bed with their hearts at peace. 
in Nigeria where our hospitals are life-saving institutions and every Nigerian has access to good quality health care where no youth is unemployed and our young men and women are job creators where businesses thrive on innovation and made in Nigeria can compete anywhere in the global market where homes and businesses have access to an interrupted power supply and ideas are facilitated by functional infrastructure and cutting edge technology we are no part of our nation. East, West, North, or South feels marginalized, and every Nigerian is proud to say, I'm a Nigerian. A nation that is built in line with the design of the master architect. Stop there for a moment and study your Bible. In Deuteronomy 32, the Bible says, God gave inheritance to every nation on the earth. There's no nation without inheritance from God. But some of our people have squandered ours. I recall that in 1979, UAE, Dubai, were come, they came to Nigeria to borrow money. Look at what they have become today. You can't say it's religion because they're not even Christians there. But in 50 years, they have made such a landmark, a difference that nations were rushing to them. Who says it cannot be done here if people will yield to God and get his own true blueprint for Nigeria. I trust God that this nation will be built in line with the design of the master architect, a home to know it. Nigerians in the diaspora will be glad to return. Oh, I remember the popular song that is built from Psalm 33. When they were in exile, they asked them to sing the Lord's song. And they said, how shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land, by the rivers of Babylon where we sat? And then they declare, Lord, if I forget Jerusalem, let my tongue cling to my rule. If I do not remember her constantly in all my doing, I'm challenging you that by the name, by the grace of the living God, you will also come back and contribute your quota. I'm persuaded that the nation, the new Nigeria, will be built in my lifetime and in yours. I want to thank you for listening. God bless you. God bless Cornerstone Christian Ministries. And God bless Oluyomi Adewale Foundation. And I'd like to thank my friend, Pastor Bola uh, Adewale. Uh, I recall that in 1978, you were the one who invited me to Deep Alive to be part of that ministry. And I stayed there for five years and gained tremendously. Uh, your life will continue to shine brighter and brighter. Your children will rise above the perversity of their generation and make their mark. And the ministry that God has committed to your hands will flourish. May God Almighty bless you and may the legacy of my friend continue forever. Thank you for listening. God bless you. This woman is saying the sixth we are going to do a foundation lecture. Anything can happen. And I know that there is a shift in the atmosphere. There is a seed that is sown. And that seed will germinate, it will reach to our family, it will reach to our community, it will reach to our nation, and it will also reach to the whole part of the world. God bless us. Offering, Sister Beauty. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. 
How many of us are excited this afternoon? Especially because you are about to be, right? Because you are about to be. The Bible says that we give what's going to happen. Good measure, praise God, shake it together. There you go. Hallelujah. Glory to you, Jesus. I want us to just uh, bow our heads real quick. Before we give our tithes and our offering, we're going to thank God for our pastor, Pastor Bola, like we always do. Especially in a day like this, we want to appreciate God for the grace, the strength that the Lord has given to us in this past year or years, the family, the way the Lord has been helping them. I want us to just bow our heads and let us appreciate God for this. Every time we gather, we pray for her. But today, I just want you to thank God for the grace to keep going on, for the courage, the strength. I cannot even begin to imagine how she does it. I know I say this all the time. I know the Holy Ghost is helping her, but she's human. I want us to appreciate God for that grace. Grace, grace, grace. Let's appreciate God for grace. Let's appreciate God for strength. Let's thank God for the spirit of the living God who is helping her. The Bible says without me, you can do nothing. Let's thank God for the abiding grace to keep abiding on the Lord Jesus so she can do this work. And I want us to thank God for the children that the Lord has kept them, that they have not backslidden, that they are still holding on to the blood. I want us to appreciate God. Let's thank God for them. Let's thank God for them, please. Let's thank God. All right, I want you to ask for more grace. More grace for this next, this next year. Grace, grace, grace. Grace, grace, grace. Let's cry out for more grace. Grace, grace, grace for our pastor. Grace, grace, grace. Please open your mouth and ask for grace. Grace, grace, grace for her. Grace, grace, grace for the children. Please. Grace, grace, grace. Grace, grace, grace. Grace, grace, grace. For Pastor Bala and her family. Please pray. Grace, grace, grace for them. Thank you, Jesus. Father, the Alpha and the Omega. Father, which this afternoon we present the Pastor Bola before you. And God, we ask for God that you remember God. Is that Lord you will fill her with ability. You will fill her with your spirit. You will fill her with all that you need. All that she needs, Lord, to carry out the mission that you have committed to her. Lord, as my sister said, I ask that your grace will abound to our God. Lord, the grace to serve, that that grace will abound with physical energy, that that grace will abound with spiritual insight, that that grace will abide in personal intimacy with you, that she will hear from God and deliver to your people, that God, that that grace will abound in vision to lead your church and to lead the flock. Yes. To, to, to the promised land. Yes. Father, in the name of Jesus, we present her to you today. Amen. And Lord, we lift her before the throne of grace. And Lord, that the light of your countenance will fall upon her. Yes. And upon her family. In blessings yes. and fruitfulness. Yes. In Jesus' name. Yes. 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 Hallelujah. So it's time to give our offering. Time to give our tithes and our offering. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's get it ready. Do we all have envelopes? If you don't have an envelope, please uh, indicate by raising your hand. We're going to give you envelopes. Hallelujah. Indicate by raising your hand. I've, almost everybody had a blow but one in. We apologize, man. <laughs> we apologize. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, I want you to lift your offering before the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. And I want you to pray over it. For your time. I want you to pray over it. 
I want you to pray. Decree over your tithe and your offering. You are the one who went to work. And by the grace of God, you got paid. I want you to pray, decree Malachi 3 of I. I want you to decree over it that the Lord will rebuke the devourer. That the windows of heaven will be opened unto you. There will be enough room to contain the blessings of God. I want you to begin to decree over your offering that you should, as you give good measure, press down, shake it together, and men will give to you. That you will not lack any good thing. That this will be the least that you will ever give as an offering. In the name of Jesus. This will be the least you will ever give as tithe. And is there anyone here that doesn't have a job? Or is believing God for a better job? We join our faith together. I join my faith together with Pastor Bola. And we ask, oh God, for open doors for them. In the name of Jesus. We ask, oh God, the helper of men. The Lord, you open doors for such ones in the name of Jesus. That when we gather in here to give our tithes and offering, they will be the first ones to give their tithes and offering to the glory and praise of your mighty name. And we cover every one of us here with the blood of Jesus. You will not be fired in your places of war. Rather, you will be promoted. You will not be fired. You will not be fired. You will be promoted to the glory and praise of the almighty God. In Jesus' powerful name we are praying. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's get up on our feet and rejoice as we give the offering. Amen. You are good and your mercy is forever. Come on, everybody. You are so good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. You are good. Your mercy is forever. Alleluia. You are so good, and your mercy is forever. Alleluia. Jehovah, you are the most high. Jehovah, 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 Forever. You are so good and your mercy forever. You are good and your mercy forever. Lord, you are so good and your mercy is forever.
congregation and those who are watching online, we are wondering who is this great man of God that we are talking about? Who is this person? That's what we have. Let me just see his picture. Or well, let me just say something. So we are going to have like just a few minutes to tell us a story. It's not the whole story. It's just a part of the story. Listen and be blessed. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Doug, for all that you have done. We are grateful. Uh, this morning, I want to share with
Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Daddy, for all that you have done. We are grateful. Uh, this morning, I want to share with you on what I have titled Advancing the Kingdom. We're going to look at about three scenarios or so. We're going to look at somebody who didn't have much. We're going to look at somebody who had a lot. And then we are going to ask ourselves this big question. How much of your life counts? How much of my life counts? Amen. I want to say to you this morning, only that which is kingdom relevant counts. In other words, somebody can live for such a long time on this earth. Very little of that time span. They come. feel, you know, like, what kind of places is this? 
when he visited us in the place. And that reminds me of the steps in which Jesus Christ does, where he doesn't care where you are from or who you are or what you are. He just stepped in your shoes. He walked, he tried to walk in your shoes just to understand. And that is the way I would describe this man. So we thank God for him and we thank God for the example that he laid and he gave prior to his passing. I pray that as you go home after this service today, you will re-examine your life. Our time on this planet is very temporary. If you're born again, you belong to a kingdom. If you are not born again, you need to be born again. You need to repent of your sins. You need to acknowledge that Jesus went to the cross and died for you. And you need to surrender your life to him. That's the starting point. But whether or not you're born again, every one of us will stand before God in judgment. What will you say? And what will he say? Only that which is done to advance the kingdom counts. Go to Luke chapter 5. We ask him that our lives will be present, not his legacy in Jesus' name. No Amen. Have your seat in high places. While we welcome the men to come forward for their rendition. Amen. Amen. Let's walk like men. <laughs> men, let's position like men. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Today we're just doing a song. This song actually epitomizes the legacy of our Father and the Lord. The title of the song is Your Love is Small Than My Mind Can Fathom. Listen on your place. I'm sorry. Sorry. Oh, 
Your love is more than my mind can fathom more than I know. Your love is more than the highest heaven more and forever more. Your love is more than my mind can fathom more. Your love is more than the highest heaven, more and forever. Before creation, you knew my name. You formed my life in your head. You breathed me out and I came to life. Heard my voice when I cried. Your love is more. Then my mind can't find a more than I know. Your love is more than the highest heaven, more and forever. You put in song is my finger tears. You put in songs on my lips. You save my heart and I see the wall. My head to hear your word. Is more than my mind can find a more than I know. Your love is more than the highest heaven, more and forever more. Your love is more than my mind can find a more than I know. Your love is more. Than the highest heaven more and forever more. Glory to God in the highest. Amen. The love of God is more than our mind can cut off. We put his tongue in our hearts. We turn our coldness to want. His power, his might is everything to us. We'll take the announcements now, Sister Yubo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank God for what God has done in our midst today. We want to thank God for each and every one of us that made it in house this morning. I want us to celebrate ourselves. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We want to thank God for people who are watching um, via Zoom. Uh, YouTube, uh, maybe on WhatsApp, whatever form you're using to get this message. I don't know, maybe you watch it later, wherever. We just want to celebrate you. Hallelujah! Maybe yeah. on Facebook, maybe you'll see it later. We celebrate you. The Lord that, bless us in Jesus' name. This service has been a very uh, powerful service. We thank God for the word of God that came. I pray that as we go no, it's through not, this week, we will discover ourselves more in the Lord. All over the, all over the world. The big sum of us all over the world. is the one that fashions yes, us and is with the past also there. Yes, and let people who are Jesus members of my church who stays everywhere in the world to have. Mm. At a higher mm. level, the Lord continues to bless us. Work. And uh, yeah, this week is going so to be a spectacular one as the Lord will do great and mighty things in our lives in Jesus' name. Today is the 12th of December, 2021. 12, 12, 12 means a number of completeness. A number of completeness. Whatever God has done here today, I want to tell you, God has completed that work in the name of Jesus. It is complete. It is done. Everything that you brought here, the Lord has completed it. You may look at it like, oh, they didn't lay hands on me. There was no anointing. But God, has tabernacled with us. A lot of prayers have gone ahead for this day. You don't even know how much. But I tell you, God has touched you. He has completed that thing. He has completed, he has finished it. It's a done deal. The Lord bless us in Jesus' name. So this week we start our Mondays the same way we go. Uh, Mondays morning, 6 a.m. We're praying. 12 midday, we're praying. 8 p.m. We're praying. Tuesday, the same way, 6 a.m., 12 and 8 p.m. On Wednesday. 
We are going to pray at 6 a.m., 12 midday, and 8 p.m. We'll be joining our midweek service. And it's going to be on Zoom. We are going to come together to study the word of God, learn at his feet, talk together, share the scriptures, break it down, look at it the way God uh, will want us to see it, how the Holy Spirit will be teaching us, and we'll be blessed. So please, let's join the Zoom. Wednesday at 8 p.m., the Lord bless us in Jesus' name. Thursday, we'll continue our prayer, 6 a.m., 12 p.m., and 8 p.m. Friday, we'll stand out. 6 a.m., we'll be praying. 12 mid day, we'll be praying on the prayer line. All these times, we'll be praying on the prayer line all week. But 8 p.m. on Friday, I want you to say 8 p.m. on Friday. Hallelujah. We're going to be here coming in house for the night vigil. Hallelujah. That has not happened in how many years, but we thank God for his grace. I thank God because you are here and I'm here. And so please, let's make it in house. There is a scriptures that came to mind today. That was 2 Kings 13, as uh, mommy said, we'll be having a deliverance, a family deliverance night in house. I was so excited. And the scriptures that came to me was 2 Kings 13. When you get some, you can read it 17 uh, downwards. The man of God told the king, he said, okay, shoot an arrow. Because the Syrians were a problem. He told him to shoot an arrow. Yes, he shot it once. And he told him, okay, um, when we go to verse, uh, sorry, and the man of, sorry, verse 18, and he said, take the arrows. And he took them, and he said unto the king of Israel, smite upon the ground, and he smote thrice, and stayed. And the man of God was brought to him and said, thou should have smitten five or six times. I don't know what challenge you are going through. Maybe you are smitten it once, twice, three times, you are brought it to the night video, wherever, but I tell you, Come again, smite again. Tell your neighbor, smite again. Tell your neighbor, shoot again. shoot again. As you smite, as you shoot, <clears throat> there's going to be a problem in the camp of the enemy. I don't want us to relent. I don't want us to be tired. As we were just watching and that in the Lord, a lot of things came to me. I was really shedding tears. I was so emotional. But one thing that I knew was consistently consistent. I want us to help our strength. Be consistently consistent. Please, let's come together. I don't know what this night just means, but I tell you, it's the power of God to touch our homes. Family deliverance night. We all need it. Let's take off from jobs. I know I know it's, we need this job, yes. But I tell you, sometimes we call out to be at birthday parties, to go to people to, you know, to make impressions. Let's do this for ourselves and our homes. And the Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. We have to register. Please, you will see the link. It will be sent out by our choir master. And we will see the link. Touch it. Register for yourself and for your household. And Sunday, we are coming here. It's going to be youth and young adults Sunday. Hallelujah! We are going to take over. We are going to, we are going to tell the enemy he has no place here. Hallelujah! <laughs> So youth and young adults, after this service, we are all going to wait behind. That is our preparation before Sunday. And the Lord is going to bless us in Jesus' name. Our parents, please, if you have a youth and a young adult, please take some time for us. Please, we are begging you. We won't take too much of your time. We beg you just for some time that we have to practice. Please, I know the time is fast spent, but please enjoy. It's just this Sunday. And by the time it's next Sunday, we're done. The Lord bless you mightily. And remember, we are fasting during the week. Women are fasting Mondays. Men are fasting Tuesdays. Wednesday, young youth and young adults. Thursday, the women come back. And Friday, all of us are fasting. Friday is a good day to fast. Family deliverance. The Lord bless you. Thank you so much for coming. We appreciate you. We love you all. Hallelujah. Good afternoon, everybody. On behalf of the Adirondack family, I want to say a big thank you to all of you for coming to join us. Um, for my closing YouTube, from Facebook, from um, Zoom. I want to thank Mr. Israel for organizing. Thanks for having me. So much. I want to thank them for the soon day back already.
want to thank you all for coming to honor our dear late brother, father, friend. God continue to honor you in the mighty name of Jesus. God continue to bless you as we support of Jesus' name. Let us rise now to sing the grace and then we do our salute. We want to there's, there's food at the back so you can carry with you on your way out. We want also to thank all our visitors here today. God bless you. Bless you. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of our Lord, and the friendship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and powerful name of Jesus, who give us the power to remain holy and to love him. We salute you. Go in peace. For the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank <laughs> you. 